If you watch my review to the Alunce HA1UV, you probably remember that I mentioned I'd do a second video on the HA1UV CPS. Well, this is that video. <laughs> Let's take a look at the new CPS from Redivis. And I've just downloaded this, and so it's the current one. It's available on the Redivis website. And the first thing we want to do here is to connect our device. I've got the programming cable plugged into the Redivis Alens HA1UV, as you'll see here in a minute. And so we're going to start here by picking the port, and I know this is COM port number four. And then I'm going to pick the model. It's the HA1UV. And this has another radio available to it. So we'll see if, as they do more work, if more and more of these radios are added to this. So I'm going to pick the HA1UV. Click OK. And you can see that the radio is reading now. On the screen, the progress bar is moving across. And then here on the screen, you can see it's the HA1U, the hardware version, and so forth. And so on the basic settings, we're going to go through all of these. We're going to look at the channel list first. And we can see that I have programmed this once before, so all of the channels that I've programmed in are there. I want to verify that. But the first thing I want to do here is I want to go down here to firmware. And so here I want to be able to follow these directions. So it's COM4, the HA1UV. It says, please turn off the device and press and hold the PTT and PF1 buttons at the same time and turn the radio on to get the mode for flashing the firmware. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the file. I've got it here in my uh, HA1UV. There is the bin, and so I'm going to select that. I want to download the application uh, to the flash, but I'm going to do this instruction on my radio first. So let me take a moment and do that. So I've turned the radio on. It's got a red light on the radio. I'm going to press download. It turned to green. The progress bar shows on the screen, as you can see, and I'm letting it run. Looks like it's going to take a couple of seconds, so I'm going to edit out the time and we'll be back when it's finished. You can see it got to 100%, the radio rebooted. And so I'm going to click OK. Now, because the red light was on, meaning that it was in firmware upgrade mode, I turned the radio off. And now I'm going to read from the radio again. And you can see that it's reading. This goes much faster than with the firmware. And so here are all of the things that were in the radio. So now let's just do a quick tour of the CPS. We already know that if we go into operation, we can go down and upgrade our firmware. Um, but here are the other things that we can do. We can read and we can write to the radio, set our COM port. We can choose English or Chinese, and then this the about. It gives us the version of the CPS, which is 1.0.0. So first we can go with our model information, as we showed you already. That's all there, and it's got the sales area for the U.S. The basic settings are here, and these are all of the settings that you can set in the radio on the menu. And I just like to do these here. My big fat fingers are kind of uh, fumbly there when I'm pro programming these, so using a mouse. And so I can use my call tone, my battery save mode. Uh, we can do the open up channel A in channel mode. I've got channel B and it's also in channel mode, powering on to the last active channel um, and so forth. Now, as so these are all there. Here at the bottom, we've got a couple of things that are important and that's programming the side keys. And so uh, we've got TK or the top key one, I've got set to turn on the FM radio and a long press to activate scan. Short press on side key one, 
up the zone from the zone I'm in to up one digit. Short press on side key two is a zone minus, so it'll take it down one digit. A long press on side key one will cycle through the power settings and a long press on side key two. I also have it set to scan. And so to show you how this works, we'll just hit the, the button here and I can set it to no set, power, scan, FM, radio, zone plus, and what have you. Uh, in this case, I'm going to set it to squelch, uh, which is essentially the same as monitor. So I've made a change here. So I've got all of that here. I've got check marks on what will lock. Uh, no, I've got key beeps activated, but the Roger beep is off. And then I'm going to save this. You see at the top it says save successful. So I'm going to move into my zone list. Next here in my zone list, I can have a bunch of zones. There are like 64 zones that I can set. And this helps me manage my frequencies. Now, before I can do zones, though, I have to have channels. And as you've seen, I've already got channels programmed in. So I've got zone one I've set as my VHF local channels. If I wanted to edit, I click. And here I've got check marks. And here are all of the channels that I have listed. So for my VHF local, I've got the local repeaters that are here in the two meter. And that's what I've used. I set save here and then close that. And there are 11 of them. My second zone is UHF local, which is exactly the same thing except the UHF frequencies. And then down here, I've got one just to give you an example of how you might do it regionally. I've got Texas travel. So I sometimes go to Texas to visit family so I could take this. And I've got these various repeaters programmed in. And these are the repeaters that are along the way from here in Phoenix to where I go in Texas. And so that makes another um, zone. And so you can fill up these zones with anything you want. And keep in mind, you can duplicate the channels. And so uh, if, if zone 7 is going to be something that's got both VHF and UHF, go ahead and duplicate it. If you've got uh, a zone with half the GMRS frequencies and then another zone with the other half of the GMRS frequencies in terms of receive only, you can do that. So zones are a really fun and easy way, as you've seen, to help manage the memories here in the radio. In alarm settings, I've got this set. And you notice here on all of these, they've got check marks when they're active. And so this is emergency one. I've got it set to local. Uh, and I can scroll across the screen here uh, and have a couple other variables that I can set. Here is my channel list again. And just briefly here, um, let me show you how easy this is to do. If I have a channel here, if I wanted to activate channel 24, I can double click here and I could uh, set up the frequency. We'll call it test one. It's a wide, it's high power. I can set the frequency here. So I'll just make a frequency up. I'll put in the UHF call frequency 146.520. It's not a repeater, so I could put 146.520 here. Then if, it ha if I wanted to use a CTCSS, they're available here. Notice they number them, but they put the subaudible tone in parentheses. So you can scroll through, you get down here into the higher numbers, you get into the DCS code. So all of those are here, which is really um, easy to do. This is the transmit CTCSS. This is the squelch level. I can pick it here. I can use it always off, or I can do these various levels of squelch all the way up to nine. To make a choice, I just select it. You can see it's three and so forth. Now, if this were a repeater, for example, this one is, you can see that I have typed in the offset frequency in this box instead of the receive frequency and specifying uh, an offset direction and amount. Just type in the frequency. So I don't want this there. So I'm going to uh, just kind of delete this and then I'm going to turn it off so I don't write that back to my radio. So that's the channels. And you can see here we've got a whole bunch of channels. We'll scroll down to the bottom and we've got 256 channels that you can fill up 
with the number and types of channels you want in either the UHF or the VHF. Now here's the DTMF list. We have DTMF settings here. We can, I don't do a lot of DTMF work. So if you do, this is where you would do that. For example, you could set up a stun, add the ID for the radio, add the uh, ID to turn it back on and all of that stuff that happens with DTMF settings. And then you can have a list if you had uh, group codes set in. Again, these are mainly commercial related things, not often done with ham radios. And then the scan channel list is done very much like the zones are. So again, the screen looks familiar. I've got a zone and I've got it VHF local. So I made a scan list that's the same as my zone. So I can scan a zone or in the other register, scan a different zone. But again, it works the same way. Click on the channels you want in that scan list, save it, get the save successful, and then you can move out of that into one of these other settings. And so now let's go back to the channel list. We've seen this before. We've got all of this information there. And so we're going to go up here to file now and we're going to um, save or save as. And so in this case, I want it to be something new. So I'm going to click save as. And you can see it's going to go into where I store my various code plugs. And so you can see it's got the HA1UV plus today's date and time. So I'm just going to use that. You can name it something else as you choose. So I'm going to click Save. And so now I'm going to go up to Operations. And I'm going to write this information back to the radio. So you can see that the radio moves into write mode. The little dialog box comes in, says it's loading, and you can see the progress bar moving across the screen. The right successful, and so we're all done. So I hope you found this video helpful in taking a deep dive into the Redivus CPS for the HA1UV. As always, be sure to subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel if you haven't already, and click the bell icon to be notified when we post new videos like this one. Join me over here where I've got a couple of other videos that I think you'll find interesting. Thanks for watching and 73.